This video demonstrates how you can launch a virtual machine in the Cpoto service of CSC using your own Mac OS X laptop. To be able to use the Cpoto service, you need to have a user account at CSC. You also need to be a member in a computing project at CSC. Further, your computing project must have Cpoto service enabled. On your local Mac computer, you need to have Firefox browser and terminal programs available. A good place to start using Cpota is the homepage of the research services of CSC in address research.csc.fr. From the support and training section, you can find the user guides, including Cpota user guide. There, you can find instructions how to get the accounts and how to use the service in general. In this case, we already have the account, so we go directly to the chapter 3, where the launching process of the virtual machine is described. The actual web interface of the POTA service is in address pota.csc.fi. You can log in into this service either using your CSC account or your Hakka account, if you already have a CSC account and a Hakka account linked to that account. In this case, I'm using the CSC user account, which means that I'm using the same username and password that I would use for services like Taito or Chipster. The Cpoto web interface allows you to manage your virtual machines and virtual data volumes in Cpoto. The Instances section shows the virtual machines that you have currently running in your Cpoto project. If you haven't launched virtual machines before, you first have to create a key pair that will be used to access your virtual machine once it's launched. You can use the Cpota web interface to create key pairs, and the instructions how to create those key pairs is described in the Cpota manual, chapter 3.2. So to create a new key pair, we go to Cpota web interface and press the create key pair button. Then we define a name for the key, in this case the key name is key for my Mac, and then create a key pair. The key is stored to your local computer, to the default download location. However, to use it you first have to do the steps described in the manual, which uh, first move to the key to the default location and then set the permissions and password protection for the key. So let's do that next. So in the local computer we first create a directory called .ssh into the home directory, if we don't have it yet. In many cases it might be there already. After that we modify the access permissions of the new .ssh directory, so that only the owner of the directory can see the files inside there. And this is done with the chmod 700 command. Next step is to move the key file we just downloaded to a local computer to the .ssh directory. In this case, the file is downloaded to the downloads folder and the name of the key was the key for Mac, so we copy that to the .ssh directory. Uh, then we protect the key file with the password. This is done with the command ssh keycan minus p minus f and then the key name. In this case, the key name is key4mymac.pem. However, to be able to do that, we have to first modify the access permissions of the key file too, and set them so that only the owner of the key can read it. After this, we can now launch the SSH keygen command. The command asks you to define a password for your key file, and note that this password is not linked to any CSC password in any way. You can totally decide it yourself, but make sure that the password is a proper one. And as a last step, we will then modify the permissions of the key file again, so that it can be used for accessing the virtual machines. So now the key installation is ready in our local computer, and we can switch back to the Cpoto web interface and start launching a virtual machine. In the Instances view, you can find a button Launch Instance, which is used to start the launch up process. The launching process is started by defining a name 
for the virtual machine. In this case, the name will be demo VM. Then we define the virtual machine flavor we are going to use. The flavor defines the size of the virtual machine. In this case, we choose standard small, which has two virtual CPUs and two gigabytes of RAM. Then we define the instance boot source. In this case, we use the images provided by CSC. From the image list, we in this case choose the latest Ubuntu version. And finally, we have to go to the Access and Security tab and define that we are going to use the key we just created, so the key for Mac in this case. You can already here define also the security group to be used if they are available. In this case, we choose the default security group to be used in the virtual machine. And then we press the launch button to start the launch up process. The launch up process will take some time. To be able to access your new virtual machine directly from your local computer, you have to define a public IP address for your virtual machine. Uh, this is done with the associate floating IP command. If you haven't allocated any IP addresses yet, you must allocate a new address by clicking the plus sign next to the IP address menu. In the allocate floating IP screen, click the all allocate IP button to get the new IP address from the public IP pool. Now you should have a new IP address available and you can use this IP address and associate it to your new virtual machine. And now in the instances view, we can see that the new virtual machine demo VM has a floating IP address associated. By default, the firewalls of the CPOTA environment block all connections to your virtual machines. To be able to use your virtual machine, you must create security groups that define the IP addresses that are allowed to access your virtual machine. In this case, I'm going to use the virtual machine from my local computer, so first thing to do is to check what is the current IP address of my own machine. Uh, from the CPOTA manual, you can find a link to one of these services, which you can use to check your IP address. There are several of them available in the internet. So here is my IP address, and I can now copy it and go back to the CPOTA web interface and there to the Access and Security section and start creating a new security group. I go to the Security Groups tab and there choose Create Security Group. I need to keep define a name for my security group. In this case, I will name it as my Mac. And I can write also a description if, I, if needed for the security group. It's not mandatory. And then I press the Create button. In the security groups listing, there is now a new group called My Mac, and I can manage the rules included in this security group. Manage rules command opens a view where I can add a new rule to my security group. In this case, I will add security group for port 22 that is used for SSH connections. And then in the CIDR field, I add my IP address and slash 32 to define that connections are allowed only from my specific IP address. So now we have the first security group ready, but we still have to define that the virtual machine that we launched will be using this security group. So we go to the manage security groups part and then add my Mac security group to my virtual machine. And now this virtual machine will allow SSH connections from the IP ad address of my local Mac machine. Chapter 3.3 .3 in the POTA user guide shows how you can now access your virtual machine using key files and SSH. So now what I need to do is to open a terminal session in my local Mac. The one we used before is here. I can continue here. And then I open SSH connection using the key file. The location of the key file is defined with minus A option. So the location is now directory.ssh and the key file is key for my Mac. 
in the virtual machine images provided by CSC, the default user account is cloud user, so we use that. And the name of the machine is the IP address here. We copy it from the instances view. So this is was the one which we assigned for the machine as a public address and then launch the command. After allowing the connection, the SSH program asks for password. So this is the password that we defined for the key file. And now when we give the password, we are able to log in and now we are inside our new virtual machine and we can start working with it. The virtual machine launcher process that we used here in this demonstration is just one of the ways of setting up your virtual machine in the CPOTA service. In many steps, there is alternative ways and methods to do things. Further, remember that you don't have to define individual key files or security groups for each of your virtual machine. Instead, you can use the same key and security group for several virtual machines. And if you have any questions about running CPOTA services, please check the CPOTA user guide or contact CSC service desk. Thank you.